The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Lepp presents Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Katherine Weiss and we have a very special program today. You're going to hear from the next generation and their point of view mm. of how they view Israel and the importance of it. Yeah, this is really important to us because right. as parents and the older generation, it's really important to us to see that the millennials and those that are younger are coming up with an understanding of the centrality of Israel regarding Christianity and Jewish life. Mm -hmm. And especially when we see the attack that's coming today on mm -hmm. American campuses and against the Word of God, against the, mm -hmm. uh, against the return of the Jews to Israel, mm -hmm. we really want to be part of the uh, being with the next generation as they express their love for God and for the Jewish people. So we're going to hear from some voices out of Israel today, Messianics, and we're starting with Joshua Aaron. Joshua is a musician, and music tells the story of a generation. So let's go to my interview with Joshua Aaron on location in Israel. Joshua, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited about your music. Our people back home are gonna be thrilled that you were able to come on the program. How long have you been making Messianic music? Uh, about six years, full time, all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of your music has incredible breadth of touch on the internet. Tell us about that. Uh, well, uh, I'm just thanking God for YouTube yeah. uh, and just people. You know, 2009, we put out an album called Bo Yeshua, which I didn't think anybody uh, it would grow to any level. I just did it for a local body, um, just to share about Israel through song. Right. And then people were requesting the CD, and I thought, oh, well, let's put that on iTunes and see what happens. And then I, before I knew it, I started traveling uh, is, uh, the, uh, the United States and then the nations and so kept moving from there. For our viewers, Bo Yeshua, come Yeshua. Come Yeshua. And a lot of your music is really about the second coming of the Lord, isn't it? Yes. I, honestly, I, I keep asking God, can I write about something else? <laughs> because it's, that's all I keep thinking about is, uh, is about him coming back. Well, where I live now in, um, in northern Israel, um, my house faces directly south in the Galilee. Just and I keep saying, I keep just asking, hey, can I just see? Will I be here and see him come down over Jerusalem and land on the Mount of Olives? Just, will I see the sky part? I was just at uh, IKEA or IKEA, we call it here in Israel, yes. and this Orthodox guy is like, Messiah's coming soon. Messiah's coming soon. I'm like, yes, yes, he is. They know he's coming. Yes. Um, and that's really, you could feel it, even though those who don't know he's coming for the second time, mm -hmm. um, you can feel it here in Israel. He's coming soon. I have an Orthodox friend in Shiloh. He says, if you're right, I'll be like this. If I'm right, you'll be like this. <laughs> we're both going to see him come. That's right. That, that's right. That's a new day. Yep. So your music touches everyone. I mean, yeah. it, it, a very wide breadth of touch around the world. Um, tell me about the, I saw the video with your, uh, your daughter yeah. uh, looking for the return of the Lord with you. How did that unfold? And who, how did you make that video? Well, a good friend of mine, Michael Hills, and he's a great, video guy here in the land uh, we were just kind of sketching it out and we just kind of uh, wanted to depict it as a child waiting for the father as us were you know like yes. although we're the bride there's this there's just he's our father and mm -hmm. just that reunion kind of like if you watch the, the video it's like her looking for me and all of a sudden in the end she finds us right. Who was and dares and dares to come My Savior King Gave his life for me And I know he's coming back to bring me home I know he's coming again I know he's coming again Yes, I know He's coming again I know 
He's coming again, oh, he's coming again. He's coming again. Again, then we'll sing some more. We we'll keep on singing till he comes again, until we reach the golden shores. We we'll keep on singing till he comes again. Then we'll sing some more. We'll keep on singing till he comes again. Then we'll sing forevermore. My wife and I really have, we have a passion for the next generation and knowing the truth about Yeshua and the truth about Israel. Uh, tell us about that. How, how are you seeing the, is there a change coming? Are, are kids awakening? Is there something happening with the younger people? Well, I can, you know, from my angle, you know, being in Israel often, the exciting part for me is, first of all, I think maybe most of the viewers might know that uh, there's this in Israel today, this is the most believers we've had since the book of Acts. Correct. You know? Um, the cool part of that is some of these are now our second, third generation believers, like mm. r b being raised, born and raised here. Right. So I think with that comes this indigenous connection that we've never had before. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the season where uh, younger believers are starting to really grab on and it's their own. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's brand new, it's something they were raised with and I think that's going to be a, um, something that starts a wave. I think you're right. In, I think, I, and I think I, I've heard that. When the music becomes indigenous, when the music yeah. comes up out of the people because yeah. of that generational yeah. change, uh, keep your eyes open because mm -hmm. big things will happen. Yeah. And so now there's uh, this music like yours and others is coming up out of the land. Yep, yeah, out of Zion. Wow. And, yeah. Uh, so tell us what, what projects are coming up for you. What do you have planned? Uh, I've got another album coming up, some uh, interesting songs. Uh, I love them all. And uh, if you've ever listened to my music, uh, if anybody's ever listened to my music, it's always uh, a variety of styles. Um, I've written a song recently with an Indian chief about <laughs> another uh, one of those man songs that I've been praying for. Uh, that you I can't speak an American Indian. Ameri Native American Indian. Yeah, we have chief. close friends as uh, leaders in the American Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So who is this person, by the uh, way? Chief Joseph Riverwind. Huh? So he's in North Carolina. Great. Um, so we got some, some good stuff happening. Yeah. Um, I've been, you know, just trying different things. I like to play the ukulele. You know, there's a lot of songs that I've kind of moved from that solemn state season mm -hmm. to these just songs that make you smile mm -hmm. or uh, make you look to the heavens. Yeah, man, I know that. And stomp your feet. I, I hear that in your music, and that's what captivated me. And when, when our friends heard that I was interviewing you, they were thrilled because they, 
they again also see that expectancy in your music. Um, Yeshua is coming. He's coming. Yeah. It's, it's, it's inevitable. So you were raised with the knowledge of Yeshua or did you have a personal moment in time as a teenager or a young person where the lights all went on? Or? I was raised with the knowledge. I, I was the only one born of the five. I was the youngest of five. Uh -huh. I was born right after they accepted the Lord. Wow. So um, I was raised with the knowledge, but at five years old I had a very clear... I had a vision beforehand. I, I saw a, a, a demon actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to close my eyes and run past it because it was at my doorway staring mm -hmm. at me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how uh, to explain other than it looked like Darth Maul from Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know. And this is before I, I even know what Darth Maul or mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they even wrote him into the script at that point yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember running to my, my parents' bedroom just crying and, and trying to explain them what they saw and they just wrote it off. But it was, I've only had two visions in my life and that was really clear as day. Mm. It just brought this reality of the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm. The spiritual yeah. realm. And I was afraid that uh, if Messiah came back, because mm -hmm. at that time they were watching the end time movies and all that stuff, yeah. Left Behind and, uh -huh. and such. Uh -huh. And I had older siblings because I, I, I think I watched some of the movie and I remember mm -hmm. just being scared to death mm -hmm. that I was going to miss it. You had to get right at five. Oh, yeah. I had to get right. Uh, so I'm like, I kept asking my dad, is he coming in the clouds? Is he coming in the clouds? Like mm. I was afraid I was going to miss it. Mm. I can, you know, you know, you know the movies, and that the trumpet would sound, and then the clothes are folded perfectly in the floor, and everybody's right. gone except the one person, <laughs> and I, that that scared the the pants off of me. And uh, one day, my dad asked, you know, do you want to know for sure? I said, yeah, I do. Wow. And I accepted him, and literally after that that day, that next day, I started making up little songs about him, just making up little songs. I didn't think anybody cared. Um, God cared. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, and I've been singing about him ever since and I've never been afraid about missing it ever since either. <laughs> That's such a great, great story. Yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to having your music on the program. We're looking forward to when you travel again, uh, hosting you in the, the nice. U.S. We'd love to have you come to our congregation. That would be great. I'd be honored. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. By which we are saved the name. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Israel is a land full of promises. We will never be the same, so we invite you to come. It's a trip of a lifetime. We would love you to join us. You know, when you come with us to Israel, you'll see how different it is from what the news says. Mm. There's so many layers to Israel, and yet it is so full of His shalom, His mm. peace, and His presence. Yeah. And the Word of God will definitely be coming alive in a new way because yeah. it's seen in technicolor when you're in the land. So go to 1-800-WONDERS and come with us to Israel. Yeah, I love that someone said that Israel is 85 miles wide but 50 centuries deep. Mm -hmm. And every time we go, we go a little bit deeper in the Word of God. Amen. So we love it. Um, you know, we are uh, watching on our campuses in America some of the most awful anti-Israel, anti-Zionist movements in, in history, really. Mm. They're surfacing, especially in the BDS movement, which is boycott, divest, and sanction. That is a way of encouraging mm. institutions, businesses, banks, uh, universities to no longer invest. First it was in the West Bank, the mountains of Israel, the heart of Israel, mm. and now all of Israel, mm. trying to stop the economic wonder that Israel is. And the problem with that is not only that it's wrong mm -hmm. and prejudicial and anti-Semitic, it hurts the Palestinian Arabs because they are employed by and prospering by the prosperity in Israel. Mm -hmm. They have more prosperity in Israel than they do on un, on, under any of the Muslim regimes. 
So we're just excited to see this group of young people Absolutely. representing the next generation. And we're excited up. that you're going to get to hear from our son, who actually on his college campus took a stand for Israel, and he was able to be a voice. So let's go now and hear from Jonathan Weiss. This tiny nation has been in your headlines for the past 70 years. Is it just a political issue, or is it part of some giant cosmic plan? Why do the Jewish people live in the land of Israel? Is it random? Is it coincidence? Is it fate? And who's causing all of the trouble over there? And why is there such a disproportionate worldwide focus on this tiny nation smaller than the state of New Jersey? My friends ask me, why should I care about Israel? I know this, we can't just trust every tweet, post, or Kardashian quote trending through our news feeds. What is all this buzz related to? Are there in fact historical documents and archeological sites that reveal the truth about this very ancient yet very modern land? Our generation needs a definitive truth and hope. We are understandably very proud of our son, both of our sons. Amen. They've been raised with this understanding about Jewish life, the connection with the church, and the importance of Israel. But we really want them to have the hope for the future. And that hope, of course, is primarily in Yeshua HaMashiach, right. Jesus Christ. And that's the answer to his question. It's hope. Yeah. And that there is a great hope and that, you know, these, these three things abide, faith, hope, and love. Mm. And just because the world is going, you know, fast into a, a decline, mm. doesn't mean that the kingdom of heaven and, and the people that are part of that mm. are supposed to have even more so hope faith and love. Yeah. So let's go now and hear more from the next generation of their view of what they're seeing in Israel. Yossi, you are a native Israeli, Sabra. Uh, what part of Israel did you grow up in? I grew up actually in um, Matei Yehuda area. That's like the kibbutz and moshav area. And then I moved to Jerusalem at the age of 12. And you're working in media, and you are, yeah. uh, we're standing here, we're sitting here outside the pavilion of the King of Kings, and uh, you've had a journey of faith. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, actually, at the age of 16, I basically fell from my faith, didn't believe it anymore. During the army period, I started believing again. Mm. Uh, I came to a point where I was really stressed and really broken, where I asked God to come back in my life wow. and intervene. Um, so basically, about took maybe two weeks and I was really reading the Bible every day and having a good time. If you have a message for uh, American young people, what would you say to them? Just be ready to hear God in the, in the storm. Just listen to Him. Uh -huh. And do you feel that uh, is, there's a certain way that we can stand with Israel? Anything that, that our viewers can know about standing with the young people in Israel? Well, basically, Israel is about to face a lot of hard times that's, that are coming ahead. The only, th the main thing you can do is keep talking to your neighbors, keep talking positive about Israel, and basically, the more support we have, the more we can give. Jamie, we're here outside the pavilion where the King of Kings meets. We were here Sunday mm -hmm. night. You did a great job leading worship. Yeah, Thank that. you. Uh, tell me, um, what's your, your work here is as a worship leader, but you're also involved with reconciliation. Tell well, us about that. Well, uh, my role at King of Kings is, uh, is the, is the um, young adults director and the music director. In our young adults, we have uh, mostly international young adults, but we also have Jewish and Arab uh, people who attend the group. But I, but I also work uh, with some uh, reconciliation uh, ministries, especially to promote uh, worship events that are both in Hebrew and in Arabic. Wow. Finally, music is always a really powerful tool to unite people and to just kind of get the tension down and get yeah. people at least in the same room worshiping together and just changing the atmosphere so that there can be a little bit more dialogue. Just to see, uh, I don't know, like we, last year we had a, a worship event, just to see like Arab believers, like like getting up on, on the shoulders of a Jewish person and dancing around like a wedding, like it's, look, yeah. to, me, to me just seeing that kind of atmosphere. Uh, I don't think peop, our viewers really understand that there's a, a movement here in Israel for Jews and Arabs, especially young people, mm -hmm. to worship together and to come to know each other. And you, and you know, I, 
to be honest, I wish it was uh, it was more prevalent right. than it is right now. And right now, I'm seeing seeds here and there, yeah. and uh, and I wish it was more prevalent. But but I. I see it happening more and more, and it's just exciting to see people uh, even being willing to sing in in the language of your enemy, quote unquote. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's an amazing thing to see. Some people might say today that the promises are over, you know, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the promises are done away. Do you have anything that you want to share about that? It's not over. Not over. I think it includes everyone, not just the Jewish people as well, but right. uh, everyone who accepts um, Yeshua as the Savior. Um, is part of it. Yeah, Abraham was the father of faith and, yes. and that promise went to all nations. Started with Abraham, yes. went through Isaac and Jacob. And also including Esau, you know, we've really been emphasizing right. that God has a destiny for the people, yeah. uh, the Arab people, and um, our mm -hmm. message is love. Yes, and, exactly. Um, I know yours is too. So do you work here in Israel? I work. I work at a security. So it's a good experience. and. It's also, I think, opportunity for me to share more about the love of God, both Jewish and the Arab nation. I also am loving the Arab nation as well. I have many nice. friends and I try to share as much as I can. That is awesome. Um, do you have any message for America, how we could stand with Israel or pray for uh, the believers here in the land? Yeah, is to, um, to keep us in your prayers and that we would be more willing to love our enemies as well because it's it's our situation and we're like on both sides and we don't know who to really follow the most and we're always remembering that in the Bible it's written we should love our enemies as well so we do need prayer of that and that we are actually being one so Hi, I want to thank you for continuing to support Zola Levitt Presents. That's how we've been able to bring you our television program for many years now. But not only on television, you can also connect with us online. You can go to our Facebook page anytime, as well as the YouTube channel. And thank you very much for your continued support.
is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Joshua, I think your message is in your music, but I'd like you to look to our viewers and bring, bring a message from your heart to America at this time, would you? Yeah. Um, you know, I'd just like to say that uh, people, America, nations, get ready, because Yeshua's coming. He's not coming in a, a, a white suit and a tie. He's coming riding on a white horse <laughs> with fire in his eyes and a sword, come, flaming sword coming from his mouth. It's, it's, uh, it's imminent. He is coming. We are closer than ever. But uh, I just invite you to look to the heavens and look to Israel, because he's not coming to America. He's not coming to Europe. He's coming to this specific country, and I believe that he's coming very soon. And there are now thousands in this land saying, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. Even Messiah himself said, you will not see me until you say, in Jerusalem he said, until you say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. So my, I, my prayer is that you would pray and encourage others to, to shout that out. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and pray for Israel that they would come to know and understand that Messiah, Yeshua, is not coming back for the first time. He's coming back again for the second time as, as the conquering king. And uh, the phrase is, Bo Yeshua, come, come Yeshua. Yeshua came first as a lamb, but now he's coming as a lion, and you can hear it in Joshua's voice. Yes. I mean, he is returning as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. This is a really good message, and we want that excitement and that forward look for all people of the next generation. Yeah. It's so amazing to hear what's going on in Israel, to hear from these young people. It's probably the most encouraging message we can get because... We labor for them. We want them to, to pick up the baton. We want them to know that there's hope in Yeshua, there's a future with Him, and that He will settle issues. He is Sar Shalom, mm -hmm. the Prince of Peace. There's, he really is the solution for the Middle East, and that's what we're reaching for. So yeah. it's great to hear these young people. And it's wonderful to see David's arising, mm. you know, psalmists that are s singing the song of the Lord yes. and standing for yes. what the Lord wants them to stand for, yeah. even like David did, yes. in the face of the Goliaths Goliath today. Yes, it's a very encouraging message, yeah. and we hope you're encouraged today. We hope that you're catching the vision for reaching the next generation and from hearing from them because that's what we want to do. And remember, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.